Hello from the Music Interview Corner. At day two at Rockfest with Stratovarius, with Jens. Hi, Jens. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? All good. We, we just came here. A uh, beautiful sunny day. I, I hear it was a bit colder yesterday. Yeah, and I'm so happy to interview you because I had all of your bandmates we already had in an interview. Mm -hmm. And you're the only one that's still missing from Stratovarius. So it's a special honor to yes. get you today. Well, thank you. <laughs> and I feel we have a lot to talk about because you did so many interesting things before you joined Stratovarius. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1983, you went to California. That's true. Yeah. 84. 84. 84. Oh, then Wikipedia lied to me. Yes, but it's, Wikipedia is always wrong about so many things. It's like... But yeah, I, I joined uh, with a Swedish guy called Ingve Malmsteen. Yes, with Rising Force, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, and I didn't stay so long in that situation, but we did a lot of work, though. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of work for very few years, just like maybe five years. But we did very, very many tours and, mm -hmm. and stuff. It was like really many irons in the fire kind yeah. of at the same time like live albums and studio albums and you know, like and how was it for you to live and work as a musician in california it was very nice i mean the weather was nice it was like people in california or how they are they are a little bit like you know, compared to sweden you know especially in the 80s um it's like people were very open and you know like uh, hi i'm an i'm an actress and you know blah blah, blah i do this i'm so and so and you know like You, you almost get scared people talk to you in the street and you know like it's like what do they want to rob you <laughs> because in sweden nobody talks to you in the street for instance so there's like very many cultural differences and we were young and uh, but I, i still feel with our band we were like kind of like weirdos we didn't quite fit in into the la you know sleaze rock scene either um so i think we were considered a little bit the odd people also by the people that we were hanging out with there, you know, the other musicians. Like, the, the only guys I, I felt we were kind of on the same wavelength was, was this band called Metallica. And of course, they became huge later. Like, just like, but they, they were like, they had more of a punk kind of attitude and the drummer was Danish and, you know, you could always talk about, you know, Scandinavian things. But yeah, California is fascinating. I've lived in LA for three years and I went around like, I'm an actress. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's like, it's like, It's almost like you're in a movie in a way, mm -hmm. but I think there's also this thing where people just say stuff, you know, like they, yeah. they say stuff it's like, well... Yeah, I'm gonna call you, you're perfect yeah, for my exactly. movie and then you never hear from them again. Yeah, exactly. Or I'll show up and, and pick you up from the airport and then they don't show up and, you know, yeah. like this type of thing. It's like kind of, this like excuse, like, sorry, dude, I flaked. That's like kind of an excuse, yeah. you know, like... You yeah, know. the Californian flakiness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I flaked is like an excuse, um, which is strange also, but you get used to, you adapt, you know, I guess. Yeah, and you also worked with Dio from 19, if, if it's true, from 1989 to 1990, is that true? Yes. How did that happen? Uh, I guess it's just like word of mouth kind of thing. Uh, I think he realized that I had just left English band at that point because I had enough of this hectic, I mean, he was like kind of disorganized on a lot of levels. Uh, so I actually left English band and I had nothing to do so I think and, and, and Ronnie had basically fired his whole band oh, yeah. uh, except the drummer and the drummer left a few months later so it was like complete turbulence uh, and it was great R Ronnie was very nice um, I think that album and that era of his life it was I think everybody felt that this grunge was coming in a way so uh, I think that, that the writing process leading up to when I joined the band, I think they had been writing for a year before I joined and the recording and the tour it was all like in the shadow of this crunch coming like, so I think he was looking for a sound he didn't quite find with that album but then I think a few albums later he found something very interesting, you know, this like Angry Machines era like, so yeah It was really a lot of fun like, to work with him like, yeah, It's amazing that you worked with him because I think Dio is such a legend Yeah, yeah And you also released uh, many instrumental albums yourself. And one that stood out to me is Ten Seasons, yes. which was a piano improvised at the Mark Cosby Gallery yeah, in New York. That's true, yeah. It, was, did, yeah. it was like, it was a um, long story, but I, I knew somebody who knew somebody. And we, I, I was just looking for a place that had like a piano somewhere. And it was a very kind of humble 
location actually it wasn't like a a super big room even but you know I mean I put the mics very close and just like recorded a bunch of stuff yeah it it was I think Jonas Helborg's label they had like this publicist that knew Marco Stubby and that's that's how it went about like and it was just literally because he had a piano there and you know it's like can I borrow it a few nights like yeah okay it's like so cool I think it's really yeah. cool do it, you it sounded it probably sounded cooler than it was but it was like kind of kind of interesting like he had this like concept for art where he would just make he would make an original and then he would hire this like slaves to just paint copies really? oh yeah yeah it was quite creative in a way all of this uh, this gallery was like you would see these identical paintings that, that some guy was like like yeah you make 10 more you know like <laughs> I also heard you say yourself that you're a computer nerd. Yes. And you started out with an Atari, Atari ST, is that true? That's true, yes. Uh, you still have it? I think I still have it somewhere. <laughs> uh, it might be in some storage somewhere. I'm not quite exactly sure where it is. <laughs> but um, I actually had computers before that one too, but they were like not very useful for music production. But I had some, I bought some old used computer, you know, in the beginning of the 80s too. Um, but yeah, the Atari, of course, you could do this like uh, music recording on, like MIDI recording at least at that point. Like, so I used that, I guess, from 1990 on, from the Dio album on, I was off and on. No. What is for you the biggest difference between working as a solo artist and creating music with Stratovarius? I think it's. They are very different. I think with a solo artist, it's actually more mentally taxing because you have to make all the decisions yourself, in a way. Uh, you have all the freedom also. Yeah, all the freedom, yeah. So it's like, you know, I don't know. So Advarius has the advantage, of course, of being... We have, like, quite a following. So, of course, anything you release is kind of released into that context, yeah. which is great, of course. Um, but, I don't know, they are just different animals. You just said you have a big following. Your new album, Survive, that came out last year, is very, very popular. It was very well received. How did you experience the recording process? Uh, it was okay. Um, it was like we had not put out an album for like seven years. And I think the reason was, at least for me, it felt like this, that we should really focus more on the writing than on the actual production of the album. We should produce the songs first before, before actually going into the studio and start recording it. And I think one key element of that was like to try to get together and actually fight about ideas rather than, you know, each person is like doing more of a writing in the silo of their own privacy. And then you send like a finished song to somebody. So uh, it was like a little bit more of a process of arguing about stuff. But then, of course, this COVID pandemic came and it kind of threw a wrench in this idea of um, of actually getting together we had actually planned for 2020 to, to finish the album in 2020 but then with this like writing and recording process being more in room kind of thing uh, it put a bit of a wrench in that machinery too Matthias was stuck in Brazil for a long time he couldn't get tickets out of Brazil even like yeah. but luckily your band survived the lockdown yeah yeah that's true yeah. do yeah. you have a favorite track on survive uh A favorite track at the moment, maybe even this Voice of Thunder, but that's like maybe not the most commercial song. I don't really know. I think uh, Survive is also nice, like the song Survive. Like I don't know. I, that's my favorite. It's, it's hard to pick a, a favorite because I, I kind of liked all the songs. Um, we spent a lot of time writing it, mm -hmm. uh, and there was like also a lot of material that we just didn't finish. Like. So we had a lot to pick from, in a way. We're talking about favorites. Uh, what do you like most in each of your bandmates? And are there things you don't like? Of course, there's always like some areas of conflict. But uh, I think everybody's like a true professional. That's like what we have now in the band. And of course, that's like surprisingly important. Mm -hmm. That uh, nobody's like a severe alcoholic or they don't like to show up for work or, you know, like this, this type of thing. That's like, of course, when you're running day-to-day -day business, that's like a very good thing. But uh, everybody's creative, you know, like... Um, and I think it, you kind of need that, not only for the music, mm -hmm. but there, there are also very many business decisions that, that require some creative thinking. Mm -hmm. And everybody kind of has to be on the same page with this band. We, don't, we do it a little bit kind of like a democracy, so... Um, 
you really need to have thinking individuals also because of course if you have a democracy and then three of the people are idiots then of course you have Idiocracy. a democracy <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so fortunately that's not the case with our band <laughs> we don't have, we don't have any idiots and we have like geniuses and not idiots so that's that's a good thing musical geniuses etc etc so and what is the craziest or the funniest thing you and the guys have ever done on tour oh i don't know we have done some i think again after like that let's say 2005 2006 i think it calmed down a bit it was you know when the band was big late 90s and early 80s whatever like let's say before 2003 of course the touring with Salvarius was also quite hectic and we did kind of a bunch of stupid things but it was nothing really stupid like Timo told me something about uh, pyros in a toilet yeah that's that was like 99 or something like this um, that was typical stuff I mean the only reason anybody remembers this is because uh, one guy was filming it mm -hmm. uh, and it ended up on this DVD But yeah, it's also on YouTube. We linked it with the last yeah, interview. Yeah, exactly. I think, I mean, we did a bunch of stuff all the time. Maybe I did more than some other people in the band, but <laughs> it was like, you know, you have more energy when you are young or whatever. But I think there was stuff like that every day, but it was kind of just a coincidence that the, uh, one guy in the crew had the camera and was like, oh, let's film it, you know. And then somehow we put together this DVD at that point in, in the band's career. I was finding this, you know, he had lent me some tapes. Yeah, you can copy some stuff here. It's like, okay, I go, I look through. And he had this like porno recordings with his girlfriend <laughs> on the same tape. And it's like, okay. And then you fast forward a bit. And then it was like some band things. So I just copied the band things. And this was one of the things. Like, Very decent of you. Yeah, 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 no, no. I it was like, oh. <laughs> He could no. have had his own show like the Kardashians. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it was like, yeah, yeah. but it was nice porno. But I mean, invasion of privacy and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. So I just copied the, the strato bits and I gave him the back the tapes. And I'm sure he lost the tapes. Though. And what is your biggest dream for the future? I don't know. Just that everybody survives and keeps healthy. And, you know, we keep, keep working like this. Like, so it's kind of humble. I'm not expecting that we will be headlining like Wembley Arena or something in the next 10 years, but you never know, of course. Uh, I think if you have like sound values and you have good new material, you have good old material and like good mindset, you get some decent work done. I can't like. And what is your favorite song out of all the songs you made with Stratovaris? Your favorite song to play live? Um, I think Hunting High and Low is pretty high on the list. It's because, actually my very favorite. Yeah, because it's so, people get so happy, you know, like mm -hmm. they, they sing along with the chorus and, you know, the whole thing. Yeah, it's such a beautiful, positive message. Yeah, it is. Ex exactly. Yeah, exactly. And how does it feel for you to play at Rockfest today on the main stage? I think it will feel great. Like, I was here with Rainbow like a few years back. Uh, it was also windy and actually it was warmer then. But so I know the place. I think we, Stardewise might have been here also. Or was that some other place? I don't remember. But, I mean, I know the, the, the setup and the, you know, like, uh, no audience. I think it's going to be fine. Sure, I'm going to watch. Yeah, okay, perfect. <laughs> Is there anything you want to say to your fans? I don't know. Rock on! Yes. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, it's difficult to think of some, something good, but hopefully you enjoy the music. And, uh, <laughs> that was good. Yeah. Thank you so much for the nice interview, Jens. Yeah, thank you. And goodbye from the Music Interview Corner. Bye. <laughs>